Good morning, Kahal Kadosh. Welcome, everybody. Erev Rosh Chodesh Elul, Friday, the 29th day of Menachem Av, corresponding to August the 30th, 2019. Uh, the Lighthouse Torah Project live video feed sponsored Le'ilui Nishmat Devorah Feige Bat Shemuel, Ora Devorah Bat Shemuel, Leah Bat Yosef, and Esther Rivka Bat Avraham, as well as for the Refua Shelema of Menachem Mendel, Ben Sara Basha, and Hannah Bat Shani. The iTorah.com sponsorship of today's live audio recording dedicated for the Shiduchim of Nehama Dina Bat Hannah Batia, Eliyahu Haim Ben Esther, Sarah Simha Bat Sofi, Rachel Penina Bat Jenny. At the Edmund J. Safra Synagogue, today's class dedicated to Elu Nishmat, Yaakov Beda Hamu Yakohen Ben Sarah. Mr. Yaakov Beda, a beloved father of the Beda family here with us, uh, learning and praying with us today, Le'ilu Nishmat, their beloved father, that I knew him, and I speak about him in a few moments. I apologize for those watching live my new look of today without the jacket. My jacket is soaking wet, standing to my right. I was checking a few things outside of the mikveh, and the increment weather, you know, we needed to, yeah, I got the umbrella, but 15 minutes later. But Baruch Hashem, the umbrella came, my jacket is drying up now, so that's the reason why I am without the jacket. So don't take it, Hasbe Shalom, as a new fashion statement. Baruch, European Fashion Warehouse, right? Beautiful. Baruch, Atta Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Shehakol Nihiya Bidbaro. I cannot start the class uh, without talking about uh, today's day, August 30th, August 30th for my family is a very memorable day. Uh, not on the Jewish calendar, but on the English calendar. But since many family members and relatives listen to the class, I don't want them that I forgot to remember that today is our wedding anniversary in English date. In Hebrew date, which is the real one, is in a few days from now, Elul 5th. But for Shalom Bayit reasons, I had to say something. And I also wish a happy English birthday to our daughter, uh, Nehamadina, that today also she commemorates her birthday. For Shalom Bayit reasons, I have to say that publicly as well. But in a more serious note, before I speak to Mr. Beda, Alava Shalom, uh, we are all concerned about the... arrival, right, of a hurricane. But as I said inside, David HaMelech or Mechila, Shalom HaMelech says in the book of Tehillim, although most of the time we attribute the book of Tehillim to David HaMelech, but the book of Tehillim had many composers. And one of them was Shalom HaMelech. And Shalom HaMelech writes towards the end of the book of Tehillim, Im Hashem lo ishmor ir shav shakat shomer. And actually, the beginning of the Pasuk is, is Im Hashem lo ibne ba'it, shav amlu bonav bo. Im Hashem lo ishmor ir, shav shakat shomer. King Solomon says, If God does not bless the building of a home, the builder will not be able to achieve success in the construction. And if God doesn't keep an eye on a city, the guards and the officers will not be able to do much meaning to say that we have two elements here. Number one, making all our natural human effort to be safe, to be guarded, and to avoid danger. But parallel to that, we need to remember that tefillah and charity and Torah learning have the power to reverse any negative decrees, as the Midrash Rabbah writes, utshuba, utfilah, uzdaka. Ma'abirin etroa agezera. So if you follow the, the updates, interesting patterns. Yesterday was heading up north, and now suddenly was lowered to the Palm Beaches area, which is only a few minutes away from here. When is going to come to our town? Maybe it doesn't come. But according to the Hachamim of the Weather Channel, it seems that Shabbat will have rain and no more than that. Therefore, 
as I said inside, the Eruv will remain active unless something shifts in the afternoon. But so far as of now, the Eruv is kasher in this part of town as well as the other cities of Aventura. Concerning the questions that many people asked before, will the ladies' mikveh be open? It's an excellent question. So far, yes. But if there is heavy rains and we have a governmental order or police department or the city of Aventura ordinance to avoid the streets and to stay indoors and not to drive because of flooding, because of wiring, regretfully the mikveh will not be able to be open and the person will have to delay going to the mikveh one night only, hopefully. But, you know, the Gemara writes, Dai la sara besha'ata. It's enough, the challenge, when it's in front of us. We don't have to start building. Are you opening up the kolel on Monday? Yes, the kolel will open up on Monday. Maybe if it's rain and it's difficult to come, we'll do it in our, across the street in the building. Doesn't matter. But definitely, we're going to continue monitoring, taking the precautions, but also not get overwhelmed and start flying out of the country, traveling to Orlando, traveling to Palm Beach. Last time, if you remember... Many people tried it, and they went into the hurricane proper. So Be'ezat Hashem will take one day at a time. And the reason why I'm speaking about this, and we'll leave this topic to rest till Shabbat or the day after, if necessary, because Baruch Hashem, as you know, many people are watching the class, and many people are listening to this class through the itorah.com uh, program. So therefore... I'm sure that many of the listeners are also from our community that regretfully they cannot stay since the end of the first minyan and they log in to watch and to listen. So it's important for everybody to know how to proceed. And that was the message that will be sent to the Kahal on behalf of Hatzalah, reinforcing that everyone has the halachic obligation to follow whatever ordinance we have by the government but, and also to be uh, prepared but also to take all the necessary precautions which are required. With all that being said, there is no coincidence in life. We believe in a concept known as Ashgaha eh, Peratit. But before I do that, allow me to speak a few moments about Mr. Yaakov Beda Hamui Akohen Ben Sarah. Not all the times when we dedicate a Torah class a breakfast or a sauda in memory of someone, you don't know the people. Many times we don't know them. But in this case, I knew him. Remember, Ronnie? In a Ro a Roma chain, right? On a, a Flagler Street, East First Street. So that's when I met Mr. Beda, Alava Shalom, going back maybe 30 years ago. Give or take. Give or take 30 years ago. And he was a wonderful person that had a certain hen, a certain charm and graciousness in his personality. His father was Hacham Shabetai, right? Which was a wonderful holy Jew. And the apple didn't fall far from the tree. And uh, always greeting with a smile. And he was triple the amount of my age. And yet, every time he saw me, with a smile, getting up, shaking the hand, you know, having a good relationship, and demonstrated a tremendous amount of kavod hachamim. And he demonstrated a tremendous amount of love and respect to the rabbis. So, Yehidatzon, that the words of Torah that we say today will elevate his neshama, and he will vouch for the well-being of his dear wife, May Hashem give it a lichut yamim meshanim tovot. The sons, the daughters, and the daughter, I believe, one, right? They are two, two, uh, two and two, right? Beautiful. So actually, I mean, they may not know this, but I think one of the sisters went to school with my wife in Miami Beach Hebrew Academy when Hebrew Academy was the only available school, you know, besides one more. Uh, in Miami, we're going back in the se late 70s. Okay, late 70s, early 80s. So we go back with the Beda family here present uh, many, many years. So it's on that Yenishmato Serurabi Srora Haim. May Hashem keep his holy soul in Gan Eden. Amen. 
There is no coincidence, and this is the statement that I started, that we talk about a hurricane a warning before Rosh Chodesh Elul. And Shlomo HaMelech says, Davar ve'ito matov. Things happen in life when they supposed to happen. Right away, when a person hears about this condition, what is exactly goes through the mind of the person? Fear, preoccupation. Some people may develop anxiety of being indoors three days. Somebody asked me, who just moved to Florida, Rabbi, should I leave the state? How am I going to survive a hurricane? I said, welcome to Florida. You know, we have hurricanes, but, you know, hurricanes, as physical they are, and there is a whole physical shiur that the slow speed of the hurricane actually is worse because it gets warmed by the hurricane, by the waters, and it stays longer in whatever they land. But let's look at a hurricane from a spiritual perspective. Tabore Olam, for some reason, is sending us an early wake-up call. Last hurricane was September 11, I believe, 2017. It was, I think, Aseret Yemet Teshuvah. Between Rosh and Kippur, I believe. The other one was in Hoshana Rabbah, going back a few years. So somehow, somewhere, and yes, we understand that the way the secular calendar works, it makes a certain month of the year more prone to a hurricane season than others. But from a spiritual perspective, I see a hurricane personally, you may or may not agree, but we agree to disagree, like a mini wake-up call, a spiritual wake-up call. Because if you look at the hurricane, and feel free to show me your app, show me your app of the hurricane, the map of the hurricane, what do you see? You see the shape of a shofar. That's exactly what you see. You have an app in your phone with him, open it, please. Professor, thank you so much. We have it. Shuf, look at the camera. It looks like a shofar. Upside down shofar. They call it in American language cone. Okay, it's flipping because it has... Mehila. But anyways, it looks like a shofar. Upside down shofar. So what is the shofar, the Benish Hai says? I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to move it a bit. Yeah. Uh, I got it. I got it. Now I got it. It's a different... Okay. Now look at the shofar. Look at the shofar. From any angle you look at it, it looks like a shofar. You see it there? So remember two days ago, thank you so much, we mentioned the Benishai that says, why is it called shofar? Because it says shofar is from Lashon Lehishtaper, improvement. The shofar is a wake-up call. With this being said, I'm going to give today's class to introduce the month of Elul. Because the first day is Rosh Chodesh. So I think that we need to know in advance what are we getting into to truly take advantage of the gift of the month of Elul. Why do we call it a gift? Because the month of Elul nickname is Chodesh Harahamim, the month of mercy, the month of compassion. So it says, interesting enough, the Kafa Haim, or the Bihaim Palachi in the Moed Kol Hai, it says, number one, give a few coins of tzedakah in Erev Rosh Chodesh Elul. Number two, it says, understand what is the month of Elul. So the month of Elul, I said this many times in different months of the Jewish calendar, but we say it one more time. Every month of the calendar, it carries a special area 
of spiritual remedy that a person can take advantage of to correct mistakes done in the past. Every month, we have a different Sadiq that connects to that particular month. For example, the month of Av that is about to finish in a few hours connects itself to Issachar, the son of Yaakov Avinu that represented full-time Torah learning. That was the month that is about to finish. Who is in charge of the month of Elul? So comes the Bihaim Palachi and it says, Tikkun Hayesod. It says, the month of Elul, a person is able to work on the strongest foundation of holiness in the life of the person. When I say these words, which Sadiq of our history comes up to the map right away? Hazak. Yosef Sadiq is from the Ushpizin, from the holy visitors of our forefathers that has to do with the concept of foundation of holiness. Tikkun Hayesod. Although in the Jewish calendar, we have something called the time of the Shovavim. Six months, Mehila, six weeks in the Jewish calendar, from the beginning of Sefer Shemot till Perasha Mishpatim, these are six weeks that every day, the daily mes message is how to preserve personal holiness and how to avoid spiritual disasters. I need to clarify that the Yesod usually related to Yosef Asadik is about the sanctity of the Berit Mila of the person. How holy the person is. If it's through marriage, by family purity. And if it's through singlehood, of avoiding spiritually danger moments of situations. But Yesod, also in English, means foundation. Foundation means something that is mandatory to have for something to exist. For example, the Kahal knows that the synagogue is embarking in doing some changes to our building. Some positive changes that will benefit the community. One of them is the building of a playground. Be'ezat Hashem. Another one will be to create a greenhouse of our waterfront terrace, meaning to say glass all around. So if it rains, we can still enjoy and benefit from the air conditioning terrace. It's coming. But guess what? We already have the project. We already have a deposit on the project. And yet, you don't see any action externally. Why not? Because now we're working on the seawall and in the foundation of the building. And based on the numbers of the building support system, then we'll know if we need to add more foundation piles or whatever we have, it's good enough to withstand additional support. I'm not in the construction business, Baruch Hashem, but I'm in the construction, you know, directly or indirectly through the many projects that the synagogue did in the past few years. And this is what we are working on now. The other day came, they sent somebody to scuba dive to take pictures of the seawall, and these are not cheap projects. These are cost that you don't see. You cannot say, oh, you're going to build a, a 2,000 social hall area, a 1,000, it's 200,000 it's it's 200, project. No, it is not. Because every foundation pile that goes on the ground, you don't see it, is $25,000. Multiply that times 20, that's already $500,000 in on the cover cost. This is without touching about the, talking about the seawall. The seawall, okay, is the wall that is in direct contact with the water. Since we're facing the water, 
there is the impact of the water, there is the corrosion of the water, and we need to see what kind of system when the building was built was done and on what support, and does it require an improvement. All these things that are happening, even though you don't see anything with a hammer and with a trailer and with a, with a, with a, with a, with a, with a, a chipping hammer, destroying whatever flooring we have. That is the last of our concern. Rule number one, if the foundation is not strong, strong enough, then we need to upgrade the foundation. Why did I give you such a lengthy shiaur in the foundation of the waterfront terrace? I'm not looking for a sponsor. By the way, we have it already. Sure. We have it. Baruch Hashem. I'll give you something else. I'll give you something else if you're interested. Maybe at the end of the class, I'll give you an IPO that is available. It's coming. It's a great opportunity. But you'll, you'll be surprised at my offer to you. So let's continue. You know what the Behind Palachi says? That the foundation of the next year begins tonight. Rosh Chodesh Elul. Every day, every day, we strengthen ourselves so when the Rosh Hashanah comes, we are ready to dance. We are ready to welcome the new year with added vitamins in our Neshama. And it says, the Pasuk writes an interesting explanation. And it says that a person should work in one of the areas that we work in the month of Elul. In other words, what is our exercise for the month of Elul? A few things. Selichot is one. But Selichot, it's only a small fraction of what we need to do. Selichot, it's important. Selichot are powerful and beautiful prayers. And I'm sure that the fact that a person sleeps an hour less or wakes up an hour earlier to come to the synagogue to pray the beautiful prayers of Selichot. As you know, we have two minyanim, one at 5.20 and one at 7, and, sh and shaharit, etc. But that's not enough. Coming to Selichot alone is not enough. The Selichot prayer needs to be accompanied by a certain change that a person is able to take upon themselves to improve their spiritual life. That is one message. Another thing that Allah says, check your tefilimot, check your mezuzot. And usually in the month of Elul, and we have the rabbi here present, Rabbi Ben Zaken, one of wonderful sofrim here in Miami, Florida, that by Ezat Hashem in two weeks, he'll be here together with Rabbi Blank to offer the community service of having the mezuzot and tefilimot checked and check all the garments for Sha'atnes. Why? Imagine yourself, you're wearing tefillin every day, and has v'shalom, has v'shalom, the tefillin may have had some alachic questions. And therefore, we take the opportunity of the month of Elul that people are more prone to do small baby steps to make sure that the misvot that we do on a regular basis and we do berachot on a daily manner are being done in a kosher way. Another a beautiful tradition that we started a few years ago is the learning of the book Tomer Devorah, which we discussed about it two days ago. Be'ezat Hashem, Be'ezat Hashem, Mon Sunday, whether allowing to come to shul, which I should, should be fine by Sunday. Be'ezat Hashem will launch the new cycle of the Tomer Devorah. Why? Because the Tomer Devorah message it's a person self-improvement, not on the religious lifestyle, but on their personal behavior as a human being. I'm not even talking about as a religious Torah observant Jew. I'm talking about as a person, irrelevant of the spiritual level of the person. Another a concept 
that the the behind palachi brings upon us today is the importance of personal holiness and i discussed this in the beginning of the class the whole idea of a the whole idea of a tikuna yesod etc so it says the behind palachi a fascinating remez on today's perasha perasha is perasha tre'e re'e means to see the concept of a person having a freedom of choice re'e anochi noten lifnechem hayom beracha uklala see that i'm giving you two pathways i'm giving you two roads a road that leads to blessing or a road that leads god forbid to the opposite and it says that rash elul re'e is rashi tevot rosh elul habet or rosh elul higia yani the beginning of elul arrive and it says do not wait till after kippur or don't wait rather till mehila till eref kippur start today why it says that the teshuva of yahid marpe la rabim a fascinating bonus he's giving what does he say that a person's teshuva has great influence on others meaning to say that i can do teshuva and benefits you you do teshuva benefits me you do teshuva it benefits him in other words it has a positive domino effect on the life of the person and it says that already from now the tradition is and this is brought down in the halakha that when a person writes a letter he should start writing leshana tova tikatev betehatemu or tiskul leshanim rabot in other words by all these small steps we are training ourselves to understand that we are needing to make the proper preparations in order to welcome the new year a bit different than the way it was before now one more it says this is brought down in the book of rabenu haari he says we all understand about the changes that i need to make in order to improve my spiritual life as a jew as a human being in my relationship with god in my relationship with our fellow men but what happens if someone has a friend or a relative a child or whoever it may be that for them the month of elul means nothing okay elul is 30 days before the shana and they don't have the drive that we are at- attempting to have to be able to really experience a change in our life what can we do for them what can we do for them so comes rabenu haari and it says as follows i like to read the full paragraph because it's beautiful what he writes in order to save time i go straight into english and it says a person who has a son or a brother or a relative or any friend that god forbid took a detour from the proper jewish way of life and regretfully he went into the roadway of sins or inappropriate behaviors or forbidden relations god forbid it palel pray he says especially in the amida in the blessing of hashivenu the berakha of hashivenu in the sidur we have ata honen the prayer for wisdom and the next blessing is hashivenu the prayer for repentance and it says pray for that person in this particular prayer in the amida and you'll see miracles you'll see that the prayer is effective but it says the behind palachi that is not a one time prayer a prayer that a person should do 
every day of the month of Elul, every prayer of the day. So let's do the numbers. If we pray three times a day, and I have 30 days, that's 90 times praying for someone. Unbelievable. Let's remove the Shabbat. We have four Shabbatot. But for the rest of the month, and I'll tell you one thing. He doesn't say this, but I'm going to say it. Even on Shabbat, you're allowed to pray for someone to do Teshuvah. Why? And guess what? I'm even tempted to say that prayers of Shabbat for Teshuvah are mega, mega beneficial. Why? Because Shabbat and Teshuvah are the same letters. You see them? Shin, Shin. Bet, Bet, Tav, Tav. Shabbat, Teshev. Teshev means to return. Teshuvah means to return. So Shabbat, I'm even willing to say publicly that the prayer of Teshuvah on the day of Shabbat goes on the express lane. Why? Because that is the whole idea of Shabbat. Shabbat, the holiness of the Shabbat is not limited like the holiness during the weekday. The essence of the Shabbat proper, it covers the day of the person for 25 hours, etc. But it says, remember that the month of Elul, it's called Aet Rason. Aet Rason in English means what? A moment that Shamaim has an amnesty on the person. You know that occasionally the county and the cities, many times, right? They give a certain type of amnesty that a person can pay a traffic ticket, right? And without paying the penalties, without paying the fees. They give you, we give you a amnesty, parking tickets, no points, just pay the bill and that's it. So it says there, Rabbi Haim Palachi, that the month of Elul is a month of amnesty. That they don't look at the record of the past, they look at the upgraded version. And it's beautiful. Meaning to say they overlook our late payments, they overlook our bounce checks, they overlook our low credit. They say, okay, you came back with this, beautiful. And it says, Umikol Shiken. This is not limited to pray for someone only. It says, also take advantage to pray for yourself. To pray for my teshuva. Not only for a third party teshuva. You know, in my wallet, I have a page. I'm not going to show it to you. I'll just show you the piece of paper without any writing. And I have two sides of this page. One side is the names given for Refuah Shelema. Those names are inserted usually in the blessing of Refuah Shelema. But on the other side of the page, I have a list of names for the blessing that I just told you, Hashivenu Avinu Letoratecha. And where did I learn to do this many years already? from the writing of today's class, praying for others. Unfortunately, there are so many names in the Refuah Shelema and in the Teshuvah list occasionally that it's almost impossible to remember them by heart. And I feel bad that I forgot about this person, I forgot about this person. So what did I started to do a while back? I put it in writing, and once I hear good news, I remove the name from the list. Regretfully, in the Refuah Shelema list, I take one name out and I add two more. But I hope to keep it on the low, on the low level list. So by Ezat Hashem, Hashem give them a Refuah Shelema. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you, because everyone can do what he says today. And I'll tell you one more thing. When we pray for others, our tefillot travel in a different dimension. 
And the Gemara even gives a formula. And it says, trading problems. What does it mean? Let's say you are praying for someone's success. Okay, you tell the person, you pray for me, I pray for you. And the Gemara writes, a person who prays for someone else's needs and they have, right, and they have the same problem, the, both the Philot get answer. Why? Because Shamaim say, why are you praying for, let's say, Abraham ben Sarah? You have your own issues. Oh, you took the time to pray for someone else? We're going to bounce back your blessing to take care of your needs and to take care of somebody else's needs. And I'll tell you one thing. There is nothing more. There is nothing more that achieves the power of success like a prayer for Teshuvah. Because what you're asking, I want this holy Jew to get closer to Hashem. You're not asking extra money for the lifestyle of the rich and famous. You're not asking for things of physical connotation, which there are berachot that have to do with the financial welfare of the person. But here we're talking about what? God, help me save this Jewish man or Jewish boy or Jewish girl or whoever it may be. And guess what? These are berachot that Hashem pays attention to because what we are trying to do, save someone's life. And we all know very w one th important thing. Pikuach nefesh dohe et akol. We have a rule in Judaism. When it comes to save someone's life, that pushes all code of Jewish law. Meaning to say, let's say that you are a Hatzala responder. You are allowed on Shabbat, on Kippur, to drive and to use the radio and to do whatever is necessary to save someone's life, even though that it means to break the Shabbat. Why? Short answer. Pikuach nefesh. Matters of life and death, all the rules and regulations of the Torah move to the side. So guess what? If this is being said about a physical life, imagine yourself how much love Hashem has for the prayers of saving someone spiritually. And let's be honest. We all know people that can use a spiritual boost. We all know. Besides ourselves. And sometimes, God forbid, it should never happen. But as a rabbi, I get to hear and to be involved in very uh, challenging spiritual problems that other people had. I'll tell you, yesterday I had a case of someone that is going through a very deep and severe case of depression. A, you know, a mature person, not a kid. A kid is also challenging. Depression is challenging overall. But the case was specifically, and he says, Rabbi, he's refusing to go see doctors. He's refusing to go see someone that can help the person overcome the emotional breakdown that they have. And we are concerned for their physical welfare. You know, what do you f sense when somebody is telling you, we are concerned for the physical welfare? Hazaku Baruch. Hazaku Baruch. So what do you do in a case like this? I'm not a, a therapist, although I was called many things, and many people consider me that I'm a therapist. I'm not a therapist. At least I'm not licensed therapist. You know, I, I'll try to help people based on guidelines of the Torah, but I said to myself, I cannot overlook a phone call of this magnitude. Somebody's telling you this is what's going on, and I, I'm a good listener, Baruch Hashem, and I let the person speak. I let the person talk. And I did some, you know, suggestions. And Baruch Hashem, 
I got a report later saying that the person was very happy on the baby steps that I told this person to take. And I said to this person, anytime you feel drowning, call me directly. I'm not publicized my phone number. Most of you here in the physical audience have it. I'm not looking for new customers, as I said in the past. But you know what? One sentence, one problem at the time. Prioritize your situation. This person regretfully lost her spouse after many, many years of marriage and apparently was a very overwhelming situation, which, you know, we, we understand that. We can relate to that as humans. But I said to this person, take one step at a time. Baruch Hashem, the Torah provides, and without minimizing any licensed therapist and psychologist and psychiatrist, but the Torah, Baruch Hashem, provides a tremendous amount of wisdom and proper suggestions to have a more meaningful and a happy life. And by Ezat Hashem, I hope that the crisis was a one-time situation and that willing, the family will do what they need to do from their end. Ignoring the problem is not a solution. You have to go see someone professional to guide you. That is part of the solution as well. But the Torah is telling us, pikuach nefesh, when you're talking about saving someone's life, you put away everything. Put away your needs, put away your books, put away your Torah, put away your halachot. And I mean to say, hatzalah case. We don't drive on Shabbat, but for to save someone's life, we drive on Shabbat. Even if a person needs to take the wife to the hospital, a wife is giving birth and suddenly she goes into labor. What are you going to say? Wait till after Shabbat? Yeah, 100 years ago, most of our grandparents probably gave birth at home, right? I think that's the way it was. Some people till today give birth at home. But the Lacha says, if you need to take your wife to the hospital on Shabbat, do it. You can't afford to jeopardize their life and the newborn child. But parallel to that, the Lacha says, if the wife is due, especially in the ninth month, obviously, every Friday afternoon, husband and wife should pray that they did not have, they don't have the need, rather, to travel to the hospital on Shabbat. That is what Hakam Abadiyah Yosef writes. For what purpose? To avoid, in other words, you're telling Shamaim, can you wait 10 hours? But for Teshubah, there is no waiting period. That's what Rabbi Haim Palachi says. I'll finish with two small messages from the great Rabbi Haim Palachi. So we finish on time by Ezat Hashem. And it says as follows. It is appropriate that a person should become current with the mitzvah of giving ma'aser. Ma'aser, as we know, literally means what? To give 10% of the net income that a person has. And it says, it is appropriate that a person should be current by the time of Elul come, so it begins in Rosh Hashanah the, in a more suitable and appropriate uh, manner. He also says a very important thing, the Ahodesh Hazeh, it says Zebulun. It says that also one of the Sadiqim connected to this month is Zebulun. Last month was Issachar. Issachar means what? The Kolel student. The fellow who studies Torah. This month is Zebulun. Who was Zebulun? You remember who was Zebulun? The brother of Issachar. Chazako Baruch. Chazako Baruch. Issachar and Zebulun had a partnership. Had a partnership. Zebulun will travel for business purposes. A portion of his income will be shared with Issachar. Issachar will devote all day Torah learning. 
and part of his learning went also to the Zehut of Issachar. And it says here, the Sefer, uh, the Bihaim Palachi, and it says, Umatov, it says, the Ahodesh Azeh, Shipto Zebulun. The month of Elul goes under the banner of Zebulun, the businessman. Because he will support Torah study. And it says, especially in this month, Yohaz Sadiq Darko Shel Zebulun, the righteous should grab the ways of Zebulun, La Asot Sedaka Im Amale Torah, to help financially those who study Torah. In a minute, I'm going to give you the IPO offer. But before I do that, it says in the name of the Hida, and I'm saying this today because Sunday we may switch the topic, as I said before. It says, be careful of not crying poverty. Let's say that the synagogue sends you a end of year statement. You owe X, Y, Z. Or the synagogue staff calls you, Mr. X, Y, Z, will you like to bring down your balance? Will you like to take care of it? And then the person starts quetching on the phone. Too much, I cannot, I don't have, things are rough. It says, when God forbid any of the above, it is not true. Meaning to say the person is crying for no reason. This person, it says, More kafui toba betobato shel makom. It says the person is saying also, God, you abandoned me. And God forbid, if you keep reading, it says that those kind of comments can boomerang back against the person. Hasve shalom. And there is more things to say, but I think it says that a person, especially in the month of Elul, should make the effort to give charity on a regular basis. And when I give charity, it means symbolic. Why? It says, peruta, peruta, every coin, every dollar, every shekel that we give into charity, it builds up, it builds up, it builds up. And Hashem will never diminish blessings for those who follow in their footsteps. I like to finish the class in a way that I really don't like to finish. But since today I welcome Zebulun and we talk about Zebulun and Issachar, I like to uh, share with the Kahal the following. The Kahal knows that Be'ezat Hashem, Monday, we are launching the Kolel. The Ezra Franco Sephardi Kolel will be launched this coming Monday. Be'ezat Hashem, thank you. The, the, we have uh, six full-time students, four part-time students, plus a Rosh Kolel that is moving from Chicago this coming Sunday. I already spoke to him. I said, Rabbi, make sure your flight is on time because we have a hurricane, so... But Ba'ezat Hashem will be fine. Obviously, obviously, to maintain a Kolel program, it's not something that is free. It is not something that it doesn't have a cost. It has an important cost. But Baruch Hashem, gradually, we're building the wonderful support team. So what we are offering, the IPO, is as follows. We are looking only, that's all I'm missing, I think, for eight founders, eight founders only. We did, we're looking for 20. I think that I'm up to 12 as of yesterday. Somebody from out of town participated. Somebody locally participated as well. And each founder will receive a plaque in the wall of the Kolel. What's, why do I call it an IPO? Because up to the number 20 founders, I'm able to get a matching grant from a generous sponsor. What's the price of the IPO? Only $18,000. One time. 
you want to do again the next year, we can talk about it. But and pay it payable in 12 months. Unless you want to do a lump sum or you want to pay it quarterly, we can do automatic credit card, we can do a check, post-dated checks. Don't take it as a personal request, but take it as a personalized request. The Colel will be hosted by the second floor, obviously in the building. So the way the Colel will work is that the rabbinical students will involve themselves in a five-year rabbinical decree degree program with test, etc., written test, oral test, etc. But besides having that learning throughout the day, two and a half hours daily, they will be available to learn with members of the synagogue as well. So it's a full day program from prayers till nine o'clock at night with a small break in the afternoon for minha, etc. We're going to add an extra minha prayer, like a 245 minha. We're going to add a nine o'clock arvid. So this is what we are looking for for the uh, program of the kolel. Anybody interested can be done in a flexible payment plan, can be done in memory of someone, in honor of someone, can be done anonymous. You know, somebody said, Rabbi, I want to give you Leshem Shamayim. No plaques, no names, no recognition. We can handle that as well. And he apologizes if somebody doesn't feel comfortable that I'm talking about money. But at the end of the day, this landed today on our lap. The message of Rosh Chodesh Elul is besides all the Teshuvah matters to support Torah learning. But even for those that maybe this amount may be high, but we are looking for small partners as well that give several hundreds on a monthly basis for a year, so at least we are able to have a good foundation and not has the shalom, uh, the opposite. So my good friends, Baruch Adonai Le'olam, Amen Amen, Shabbat Shalom, and Chodesh Tov, everybody. Rabbi Hananiah ben Akashia Omer, Ratza Kadosh Baruch Hu Lezakot Et Yisrael Lefichach, Irba Lahem Torah Mizvot Sheneemar, Adonai Hafez, Leman Sitko Yagdil Torah Veyadir, Amen. 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 Bereva. Amen. 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 Amen.